She runs. Welcome to another edition of My Junk and Stuff Garage, where we work on anything and see if we can get it to run and make something that's old, look good, and actually be useful. Uh, in this episode, this is, this is going to be part two of the 1935 Lionel Red Comet, where we get that motor uh, cleaned up. Uh, <laughs> we'll do some work on the wheels, and hopefully that won't be too boring, but... Uh, I don't know, just felt like talking about uh, the wheels on these and, and zinc pest and, and what you can do and what I did to this one to get it running again. Um, it's one of those things where the right thing to do is to go buy a set of repro wheels or buy a local that's got good wheels in the first place. Are we going to do that? No. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're going to do the thing that's hard, that makes no sense, that has a low probability of success and probably 90% or 95% of people would just look and go, why the heck are you wasting your time doing that? So that's what we're going to do, just for fun. So you can <laughs> stick around and, and see what transpires there. So there you go, part two of the Red Comet Rehab. Enjoy. And so here is my aforementioned 1935 version of the Lionel uh, Red Comet with the 264E. A red 261E ten or 261T tender, uh, two unlighted 603, and one unlighted 604 passenger car bench. So I have just put uh, a single screw back in to hold this motor in the loco while uh, I was doing the introduction, and so this is how you remove. The motor from a Commodore Vanderbilt. Okay, take that back screw out. All right, there's there's a lot of ways to do this. Probably in a pan right in front of my blue column on my layout is probably the worst way you can do it. So that's why I'm going to do it that way. But here I go. I'm using some of my old uh, brake clean. You could use a you know something else, ultrasonic cleaner, whatever you want to use. Um, well, that wasn't good. I don't want that. All right, so I'll start cleaning this off, and it may take uh, may take a few few applications, but eventually you'll get down to you'll get down to some nice clean metal there, right? And so these frames are uh, what's called chemically blackened. They're not painted. Some people may be a little confused by that, but, but they are not painted. Um, and I'm not going to judge somebody if they want to go and paint their parts, you know, when they weren't painted in the first place. But I'm just, I'm just pointing that out for those, anybody that might want to know. So, uh, so you can do a diligent job of cleaning stuff and, and again I'm just kind of I'll do a little more thorough job off camera but I'm just kind of showing you what I go through uh, same thing on the armature do some cleaning like that and see with just a quick spray and a wipe with a paper towel that gets fairly clean um, so I'll do some more cleaning on that and let's see I'll probably what I usually do is take, a, I got a toothbrush. Uh, I think recently I've been using my middle daughter's toothbrush. Uh, doesn't seem to mind. So, toothbrush is good for, for cleaning this stuff. Um, cotton swabs, uh, Q-tips, whatever you want to call, they're also really good for getting down in. So you want to clean all these things. Um, People like to oil and grease these uh, bars on the reverse units and over time those will gum up when people do that so you actually want to leave those dry 
um, and very clean but dry. Um, and so, so you need to do some cleaning in there. That's where the spray will come in handy. And again, you just you just go through and you want to you want to get all this stuff nice and clean. Okay, here we are. We're back. Let's see, I've cleaned everything. Cleaned all the monk and gunk off the motor block. Now you can go as crazy as you want on this, but this activity I didn't go super crazy as you can see I polished the drum carefully all right cleaned all of these guys up clean the crap off the gears polish the commutator face clean the muck and gunk off of that clean the fingers they weren't, remember how crappy they were before? Same, same on this one. So, there we go. So we got a bunch of motor parts for a 264E Red Comet. Alright, got the brush plate all cleaned back up. Um, I forgot to clean out the, uh, the tubes, but so I went and cleaned them out. So, like, like everything in the world, there's more than one way of going about this, and you can do it however you want, right? But Basically what you got to do is get the brush plate on and get the brushes in it, okay? Now the springs, the, the brush springs are still in the brush plate. You can't take the brushes and stick them in the brush plate and have them stay there and fumble around with the brush plate. So dang it, it's got a little piece of fuzz there, don't like, the, don't like that fuzz. Alright, I think I got it. All right. So what, what I do sometimes is I'll take the brushes and I'll set them down on here and then I'll set the brush plate on top. Um, so you can see, I presume it looks like you can see it because I can see it. The end of that brush has a little circular rub indent in it and that's from the brush spring. So you'd ideally like to have that end poking back up and running into the brush spring. All right, so this guy goes on like this. I'm gonna basically take these brushes and set them about like yay. And we're gonna see how this goes. Some days I can do this first try, some days it takes me 430 tries. Of course, this might be one of the latter because with the camera there, I'm not able to see it. So that's probably going to be a problem for me. We've oh, got one. Come on, where's that other one? There we go, spinner. Oh, that didn't work. All right, we'll pause that for a second. I'm going to cheat. Okay, I've taken the E unit apart, reverse unit. I've spread it effectively. I purposely did not show that because basically I am not doing it the right way. Um, and I don't want to suggest any poor habits. There is a an E-unit spreader tool that is the best tool that you can use to do this without damaging anything. Uh, in short, you can you can ruin these trying to take them apart the wrong way, right? Uh, I do it. I take my own chances. It is what it is. Um, I actually have the tool buried, lost somewhere, um, and I need to get another one. It's not expensive. It's probably I don't know six or eight dollars uh, and basically what it is it, it it basically is a kind of a, a bar with an angled piece on the end of it and you basically stick it in between the width of it is such that when you stick it in between here and twist on it it expands very very carefully and a measured amount 
and it spreads. And so what you're doing, there's a bar, this bar is staked into both sides. Uh, and so when you spread it, it's popping one of the sides. So that's all you do when you spread this. However, like I said, if you use, <laughs> if you use Gorilla Force on it, you're going to, you're going to flub this up to the extent that you damage who knows what in there and it, and it's easy to do. And that's, that's why I didn't show you what I did. Um, so you have a bottom set of fingers that has two fingers on it and you have the top set, which has four and you can see how crappy dirty these are. There are replacement soles. You can get them from a lot of places, including Henning's, uh, Olson's, uh, all kinds of places, train tender, uh, Jeff Kane, so forth. Uh, all excellent sources for uh, reproduction fingers and that's pretty common I I tend to try and clean them and reuse them and I will do that with these they're not uh, deformed they're not worn through uh, so these will be this will just be a clean job the same with the drum the drum is a very delicate piece as well um, it is basically a, a piece of plastic and it's an early plastic uh, you think about it uh, they started using this in probably 33 34 um, the drum part number is uh, a 259e or 259 dash number and it comes from that loco and it was an e in 1933 i think so and, and actually line l got this design in their Ives takeover, if I'm not mistaken. So as I said before, it's a plastic part. The, uh, the ratchet teeth, they will break very easily. Usually, usually though, <laughs> they're in pretty good shape. Um, you got to watch out for the little pin on the end of them. That's a very delicate piece as well. Um, and so you can see the two copper copper segments and you can see that there's a ring that goes all the way around the outside and then there is kind of the finger that's why I said you have two fingers like this and two like that so you have one here top and bottom and then if you flip it 90 degrees then you have one top and bottom on the other side and so those fingers Especially, for example, the four touch the two outer rings and intermittently will touch one of those center toes that sticks out. And the, wherever they went, I lost them. <laughs> oh, there they are. My other fingers, the two, these are in the middle. And so they will go to the two middle fingers. And so um, that's, that's basically the way that rolls. Uh, All right, so I'll cut this short again. I'm, I'm kind of babbling a little bit, but you know, I don't see a whole lot of videos that actually try and explain uh, the intricacies of the components, how they uh, work together, what each each thing does and so forth. So and if you got any any questions, please feel free to throw that down in the comments and I'll and I'll try and answer. So now what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to go clean these things up. Uh, and then bring them back and uh, we'll start putting it back together. All right, now we're going to take the reverse unit and we're going to put it in the chassis, okay? In the same way that it was originally installed in the chassis. Now, which side was it that the screw was in? I can't remember. I probably could look at the, uh, oh, I see the threads. There we go. All right, so now we're back in there. All right, so if you remember before, I made some comments about brushes, right? Uh, brush and the brush wires. So basically this longer wire, and hopefully that doesn't, isn't ratting itself out. 
it'll go all the way around to right there. Okay, so what you can do, I hope I'm not, hope I'm not jinxing myself. Need a smaller screwdriver. So this is one of those where you need about four hands. And I'm going to take that wire and try and poke her down underneath the head of the screw. Because that's where it goes. And there we got her. And I'm going to curl it away from the frame. Ooh, don't pull her too far. You don't want your brush to come out. And then... Now I can tighten it. Oh man, she came out of there. That's not what I want. That wasn't very nice. Let's try that again. I'm going to have to watch the A-team or something a little more thoroughly. Can't be having these mistakes. Alright, now, there we go. Now we'll curl that and we should be good. Alright, so there's there's the bottom brush. That's how you can install the brush wire when the uh, brush plate's installed on the motor, even though it's kind of hard to see. Details, right? I'm going to take the other brush wire and just, just for recognition's sake, sake, the two brush wires are these two, these are yellow fabric. It's really hard to see that they're yellow, but they're yellow. Okay? So, this one, I don't know if this one's going to live or not. It's kind of really fugly. I probably should have been it that way. All right, so let me kind of give her a few tweaks there so I can fandangle it down where I want it. Loosen that up a few turns so I can get the wire under the head. All right, there we go. So, so basically you can see I've been able to do the same thing. Get that wire wrapped around the screw. Get her screwed down tight. And then, then you want to take these wires and you want to kind of tuck them back the way they originally were. Okay, you don't want to don't want to go mangle them up or anything. They they were basically originally just kind of tucked in like this. So this is I'm a little worried about this bottom one. So if I have any trouble later, I'll I may have to come back to that. But um, anyway, so so there you go. So we have the unit installed. We have the two brush wires installed, and uh, so now we have. This wire, we have the, uh, this, this wire is the hot power to the solenoid, the coil. This one here goes to this little tab on the back. And here's your uh, hot wire from the center rail, okay, on the loco. So these will go together. On some locos, this wire actually just goes around to there. This uh, last wire that comes from the set of fingers over here is the one that goes back to the uh, goes back to the uh, field. It's the hot side of the field, and so you didn't see it when I took that apart because I took it apart off camera. Okay, but there, uh, yeah, you can see it there. There's that wire. So what I'm going to do is. Uh, I'm going to get myself a little section of shrink tube and I'm going to put the shrink tube over this main wire then I'll put these together and put a little solder on that, move the shrink tube down and, and seat it and call that good. Okay, here we go. I have installed uh, one set of the fabulously used wheels. Um, so I'll hold this thing up here and see how it sounds. So you hear the little 
ringing noise, but that's, that's pretty normal. You don't hear any grinding, okay? You don't hear any rumble, rumble, rumble. Get that back on. Second axle in. Made sure I had that same spot. Okay. Rotated a few times. And what I'm going to do? I'm going to set this guy back in about the same spot. Sometimes I like to check these with uh, by putting the side rods on, but uh, probably won't do that in this case. These. These axles, since these are the smooth axles, I can actually get a little twist on the end of them. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. All right, here we go. We'll give this a shot. These, I don't know if I'm going to be satisfied with these wheels or not. Um, you know, they they are a bit swollen. They're basically gaining width, so it's going to be hard to uh, be satisfied with their uh, gauge. See here, don't sound too bad. Say I haven't gotten a whole lot of lubrication in there just yet, so a little bit of that mechanical or yeah, metallic kind of noise is probably from lack of lubrication. But uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see here. I we'll have to think about this.
All right, so that's uh, turning down the hub on a non-geared wheel. And so what I did was I went in and touched the back face of the flange, backed out 10,000, so I had 10,000 shoulder space between the edge of the flange and the frame. Um, and I probably really got more than that because, you know, the motor has the uh, axle bushing that's pressed in, so there's a little bit of raised material there from the bushing. So that... Uh, that amount that I cut off, the reason I'm cutting that off on both the geared side and this side is to gain uh, gain space so that the flanges will fit between the rails and be in proper gauge and have some level of uh, allowance. Allowance is the, uh, the difference between the major and minor uh, tolerance or the major and minor dimension and so you got to have some allowance because 10 plate track is not uh, you know perfectly uniform a eh? and if you if your <laughs> if your flange width matches the ID of the 10 plate track it's not going to work either when you go around the curves the curves are a little tighter than a straight and so on and so forth yada 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 so you got to have some allowance in there so that's that's what I'm doing is trying to save and reutilize these partially damaged uh, uh, wheels that are uh, nickel plated. All right, so here we have an old drive wheel, no boss, with gear, a, a NOS, NOS, old one, unused with gear, and another old nickel rim one that I've already uh, turned down the hub. Uh, I've turned down the hub height slightly. Okay, so here we go. Here's here's the 1935 Red Comet setting back on its motor with four worked, I'll say worked, surgically repaired, whatever you want to call them. Taking some time through the lathe, they get a little machine work done on them, wheels, and it runs pretty good now. And so here's here's what the set looks like. I have not I have not even dusted any of the cars off. I haven't wiped them or cleaned them. I haven't degreased, cleaned any of the crud off the wheels. I haven't polished anything. All I've done is work on that motor and get that in, in one piece uh, so we can, can run this a little bit. So that's basically uh, what we're going to accomplish here in this part two. Uh, part three will be the the segment where we uh, clean it up and try and make it make it have that new car shine. So let's run this a little bit. I just can't wait. Real slow. I wonder this is unclean. 
through the local graveyard of Halloween. Fuel wall I say not to use. Under the floor on two. Well, there you have it. That concludes part two of the 1935 Lionel Red Comet. Uh, I pretty much uh, chose to uh, include basically just mechanical kind of stuff, right? Uh, cleaning the motor, going through the reverse unit, playing with the wheels. But just to prove that it runs, we're showing some running here too. Um, so in part three, We'll take the cars apart, take the wheels out, trucks off, couplers, all that type of stuff. We'll go through a little cleaning, some waxing of the uh, painted metal and so forth, and then polishing and so forth of the nickel plated uh, components. Um, same thing on the loco cab and, and on the tender. Um, and then we'll, we'll run it some more when she's really, really pretty. Um, and maybe we'll find some other details to show too. Uh, I might even have, uh, yeah, might have a surprise in the store. We'll see. Um, but anyway, um, I know it was maybe a long watch with all the mechanical stuff, but for all you who braved it, I appreciate it. Um, hopefully, hopefully you found it interesting. Um, that's obviously the reason why I even uh, tried to show all those things is, is I find them interesting. So, um, and also I know that if I'm working on something myself and I have a question, Sometimes go on and check out a YouTube video where you know a guy went through and uh, showed some stuff like that uh, can be helpful. So hopefully maybe it'll help somebody out out there working on their own train. So that's that's probably the best reason right there. Um, so anyway, hey, thanks uh, and enjoy. Uh, if you liked it, subscribe, throw a like down there. Hey, and look for that next uh, part three coming up. I won't make you wait too long. Um, Got a few other things in the works as well, so enjoy. Have a good one.